Earth is a disgusting 30-year-old loser who picked the worst f rank skills and became the most OP player in the game. In his real life, he had a job and worked hard to earn money. But instead of trying to find a girl to clap, he sat down at his desk to play a new virtual reality game. He thought he was an old loser, and he even called himself an old geezer. But, in the game, he felt young again. He could do all sorts of amazing things that he couldn't do in real life. He decided to name his character Earth, and he made Earth look very ordinary and boring. He didn't want to stand out because he wasn't the type who wanted to be the main character. He couldn't play the game all day because he had to work and be responsible. So, he could only play for a few hours every day. He worried that he might bother other players if he tried to play with them, so he mostly played by himself. When it came to choosing special abilities for Earth, he decided to pick skills that weren't very powerful. He chose things that weren't very good during the testing phase of the game. He did this so that the super serious gamers wouldn't pay much attention to him, and he could play at his own pace. For example, he picked a skill called Medicine, but it turned out to be pretty useless because he could easily buy healing potions from the game's non-player characters, NPCs. He also chose a skill called Kick, but it didn't have any fancy moves or special attacks, so he couldn't defeat enemies with just one kick. He even picked the skill of using a bow, but it had terrible accuracy. He tried the sneak skill, but it used up a lot of his character's magical power, and if he moved, it was easy for enemies to spot him. So, it wasn't great for running away from monsters. Lastly, he chose the skill for improved physical abilities, which was supposed to give a small bonus to running, using weapons, or crafting. But the bonus was really small. If someone wants to be strong, they should choose more special skills. With these not-so-great skills, Earth might have made the worst character ever in any game. But he liked it that way. By picking underpowered skills, other players avoided him, so he could relax and play the way he wanted. He finally entered a game called One More Free Life Online. It was called that because players could enjoy another life without needing to complete the final boss quest. They could spend their time fighting monsters, making cool stuff, or just hanging out and chatting with other players. It was a game for people who weren't too happy with their real lives. On the first day the game was released, the place was super crowded. A random girl called Earth over to sell him some equipment. But just then, some heroes returned, and Earth noticed there wasn't a single archer among them. Suddenly, a guy dressed like a gold medal started making fun of Earth. Earth thought it was a terrible way to start his first day. The guy said bows were useless and called Earth weird, a dork, and a loser. He even made Earth lick the floor. Earth felt awful, and the guy finally left. People don't seem to like archers, but Earth is totally cool with that. At the training hall, Earth gets all excited watching others practice, so he decides to give it a go. Sadly, the only thing he hits is the ground. He quickly figures out he can't shoot arrows well at all, but he's determined to get better. He keeps trying, but it's a real struggle. He ends up hitting everything except the target and realizes it's even worse than he thought. After 100 shots, Earth celebrates because he reaches level 5 and tries out his kicking skills, which have gotten stronger. He also tries his wind spell and finds it's more accurate than his arrows. With the basic skills he needs to survive, Earth decides to go out into the field. But it's a total mess with all the new players around. He figures he'll gather herbs, but he notices that players can't tell what the things they pick up are. So he tries to appraise them, but he fails a bunch of times. Eventually, though, he levels up his medical skills. Then he sees that one of the herbs he picked is super dangerous. It can stop someone's breathing and kill them if they eat it. Earth is really mad that the game developers put this deadly herb in the starting area, but he's glad he learned how to appraise things. Next, he buys a beginner's medicine crafting set and tries to make healing potions. Somehow, he manages to make a common healing potion, and he follows it up with a healing antidote. Then, he discovered that once he made one thing, the game let him make a bunch of them. Earth remembered that people could buy potions really cheap from the game's non-player characters, so he thought maybe no one would want what he made but his medicine skill reached level 7. So, Earth decided to go hunting. Luckily, there weren't as many players around, so he got the first chance at a beast. He knew that bows didn't shoot quickly, so that first shot was super important. He missed the target, and the bunny got mad. Earth managed to shoot an arrow through the bunny's paw and gave it a knee to the tummy. To finish it off, he kicked the bunny, and it went flying. Earth realized he was more of a kicker than an archer. Just then, two people showed up to say hi. There was a guy named Sway who could hardly stop laughing because the bunny had made a weird noise. He said something about humor being justice, which left Earth wondering if he was some kind of comedian. The girl's name was Millie, and they asked if they could send Earth friend requests. Sway got all excited when Earth said yes, talking about how they could become a top comedy duo. 
They left, and Earth went back to getting more experience. But he soon realized that the bunnies were pretty smart. Even when he tried to sneak up on them, they noticed him. His wind spell was able to defeat one of the little bunnies, but he wanted to try out his sneak spell to sneak up on another one. It worked. Earth pointed out that even though his bow never seemed to hit the target, when he combined it with his sneak spell, he became really strong. Earth logged off because he knew the super serious gamers would stay up all night playing, but he had to work in the morning. The next day, Earth had some terrible tasting bread for breakfast and decided to make his own food. He seasoned the steak to make it taste amazing, but he realized he didn't really know what he was doing. The first try tasted awful, and he got a score of just two. So, he made some adjustments, and the second time it tasted fantastic, but he wanted it to be even better. As he channeled his inner chef, the delicious smell attracted everyone nearby. Earth finished his dish and got a score of seven, but all the townspeople showed up, demanding some. Earth didn't want to give it away for free, so he set a really high price, and he was surprised to see they were willing to pay. He spent the whole evening cooking, which raised his cooking level to 20, and he even learned a skill that made him cook much faster. Later, Earth decided to make a bow. There wasn't much demand for bows, so archers had to make their own. His first bow was very basic, so it only got a score of 3 and an attack power of 4. But his next bow was a lot better. He used three pieces of wood and sanded down some parts so they fit together perfectly. It was a big improvement and had an attack power of 12. Finally, Earth upgraded his super plain look with some cool armor. He checked his stats and was happily surprised by how much he'd improved. But, uh oh, he was running low on money. So, he put some food and a grape-flavored healing potion in a vending machine to see if anyone would buy them. After that, we saw Earth making a ton of progress. He defeated some really tough beasts, and it was way easier with his homemade bow and leveled up skills. When he got back to the vending machine, he found a bunch of nice letters from people who loved his stuff. Everything was going better than he'd ever imagined. But, oh no, things took a bad turn. A new system attacked them all, and they had to hurry back to town. Everyone was in a big panic, looking for someone with the medicine skill and begging for potions. Earth was confused because he thought they could just buy potions from the game's NPCs. But Sway explained that the NPCs were saying they didn't have any. This was a problem for Earth because he knew everyone would beg him for the potions he left in the vending machine. Without a second to rest, people started begging for potions. So, Earth said they could only buy a limited amount and set a really high price. Surprisingly, everyone agreed to pay the high price without complaining. The nice notes on the vending machines turned into demands for Earth to hurry up, and his friends showed up to help. Sway handled the crowd, and Millie offered to take care of the money. Earth ran out of potions, so the people decided to come back the next day. But then, a really annoying shiny Wabuffet appeared and demanded that Earth give him all the potions. Earth said no, so Wabuffet threatened them. Earth finally stood up for himself and told the bully that the townspeople were the ones who really needed the potions. He told Wabuffet to wait like everyone else, but the bully tried to pay him. Earth warned him not to do that because the game's NPCs might stop selling weapons and armor, and they'd have to rely on crafters. The bully would have to learn how to get along with other players. The guy didn't want to hear it and challenged Earth to a fight. Sway warned Earth not to, but Earth wouldn't let someone boss others around. So, he accepted the challenge and decided to use the bully's overconfidence to find a weak spot. Shiny Wabuffet started with a powerful attack, but Earth dodged it easily. He found the guy's weak spot and shot an arrow right through his neck. Of course, the bully was shocked, and Earth was declared the winner. Earth was really humble about winning and promised to have more potions the next day. He logged off, thinking his day had been a success, and he figured those bullies might quit the game. Several days passed after the incident with the missing potions, and the game had a big change. Earth saw that now, knowing how to use medicine was important. People realized that even the NPCs could run out of stuff, and that's why they started thinking about learning medicine. Earth got back into the game and thanked Sway for inviting him to the guild. Sway introduced the other members of their team, starting with a big guy named Rage. He uses a one-handed axe and a shield and said he'd make the enemies come after him. Then, a girl named Nora introduced herself. She said she's good at fighting up close with short swords, but she warned everyone not to call her flat or a cutting board or she wouldn't be friendly. The last person was Kazamine, and he was super good with a sword. Earth tried to introduce himself, but they stopped him because everyone was talking about how strong he was. Earth didn't want to stand out because he had just shown a bully a lesson. Earth noticed that their team was kind of unbalanced with four melee fighters, one mage, and an archer, him. But Sway explained that Millie could use different kinds of magic, and Nora could do healing magic. Sway said their first mission was to beat a wild bear. 
Everyone was excited and confident they could do it, but Earth didn't know where all that confidence was coming from. Sway tells Earth that they're all depending on him to carry the team. Earth's like, wait, I've never seen a wild bear before. I heard they're super fast, smart, and tough to beat. But Sway ignores his worries and promises Earth he'll cook something yummy once they're done. Excited, everyone heads out, but Earth isn't as thrilled. Then, they spot some wild bears, but they're in a group, so they pick one they can all gang up on. The others realize that Earth's long-distance vision skill is pretty handy and having him around is valuable. Nilly buffs Sway, and they plan to lure one of the bears away. Earth decides to use his sneak skill and shoots an arrow into the back of the bear's neck, but he didn't think about what to do when it gets mad. Thankfully, Rage, the tank, jumps in to take the aggro. Earth explains that monsters have something called aggro, which shows who they're mad at. Rage has high defense, so he'll make the bear angry at him and protect everyone. Earth hides in some bushes to attack from a distance, while Millie heals Rage, and Nora joins in to do some damage too. The group attacks, but they quickly figure out that the bear's skin is super tough. Millie tries a fire spell to get the bear's attention, and it works, making Rage the target again. The fight is getting tough, and Sway realizes he may have underestimated their opponent. Earth sees things going south and knows he has to make a quick decision. He trusts his 38 years of life experience and takes a risky bet. He aims between the bear's eyes, thinking it's the weak spot. It seems like it worked, but it actually doesn't, and they all wonder if they're done for. The bear has way too much HP. Earth goes for his last option. The others worry about his safety. But Earth dives in and uses a spell he learned at Wind Magic level 15. He gets super fast for 10 seconds and pushes his arrow deeper into the beast's skull. Millie follows up with a strong fire spell. Finally, they defeat the beast, and they realize the fight was way harder than they thought. Afterward, Earth cooks for the group, and everyone is amazed at how tasty it is. They wonder if it's expensive to make such good food. Earth explains that it's not. The only problem is that the recipes can't be bought because crafters have an unspoken rule not to trade them. One reason recipes can't be traded is because making them takes a lot of time and money. The second reason is, even if two people have the same recipe, the stuff they make might turn out really different. Recipes are like the hard work and creativity of the people who made them. You can copy the recipe, but you can't copy the quality. Sway thinks Earth should always cook for them for cheap, and everyone agrees, even though Earth doesn't really want to. But they don't listen to him. They all ask to be friends, and Earth's first adventure with a party goes well. But in the next scene, something bad happens. Earth got too confident after beating a monster on his own and decided to go into the fifth area, the forest. He attacked an ant, and it called its friends. Earth kept fighting, but the ant could reflect damage. He couldn't move, and he knew he was in trouble. Earth got a penalty for dying and was sent back to town. He admits it was his fault for being too sure of himself and decides he needs to do better next time. Then, all players get a message about a big update called the Fairy Ball. It will have new skills and items for crafters, plus fairies to help them in their adventures. Earth knows that other players will be leveling up too, so he can't afford to get more penalties from dying. Later, we see that Earth worked hard to get rid of his heavy penalty and learned how to be a blacksmith. He doesn't want to make the same mistake again, so he decides to make an arrowhead that can pierce through the tough ant's skin. First, he gets two types of iron. One is regular iron for piercing, and the other is super pure iron for smashing. He attaches the iron arrowhead to a wooden arrow, making an iron arrow with seven attack points. Then, he makes a mace-like arrowhead for smashing. Earth is sure he'll meet more enemies that can reflect damage, and kicking doesn't let him use a weapon. So, he adds short spikes to the bottom of his boots and a blade on the side to solve both problems. Even though it's a prototype, it's useful, giving him 12 attack points and 2 extra defense. But he wants to test it and make it better. Then, a couple of mean guys come by and make fun of his boots. They wonder if they're boots or weapons. Earth proudly says they're both, and the guys feel bad because they can't do anything except be mean. Later, Earth goes to a shop and buys some bowstrings. The shop girl notices his unique boots and is kind of scared when Earth tells her he plans to use them to fight ants. She's impressed because she thought he was just a chef. As for his bow, Earth explains that he reached archery level 30 and now needs to pick a specialization. He has three choices, short bow, long bow, and hunting bow. Short bows are easy to use but have a short range and they're not good for him because he's not a melee fighter. Long bows have range and power but take a long time to shoot, which isn't good for solo players. So, he decides to pick the hunting bow, which has the same range and power as his old one, and it's a more powerful skill. 
Earth starts making his new bow and chooses a design he likes. The blacksmith, named Black, sees what he's working on and is surprised because he's never seen a bow like this before. Earth finishes the unusual bow, which he calls the X-Bow, and it has 32 attack points. This new bow needs more strength to pull back than his old one, but it feels great and is a lot more powerful. Earth gets all sentimental with his old bow, thanking it for being awesome. But then, he quickly gets excited to try out his new bow. The next day, he goes back to the forest, determined to get revenge. He finds a solo ant and smacks it with his smashing arrow. The ant tries to reflect the damage, but Earth finishes it off with his pointy arrow. But that's not enough. He wants to wipe out more ants to feel better, so he goes on an ant smacking spree. Later, he stands in front of all the smashed ants and claims his victory. But it doesn't seem like he's done with his revenge yet. Earth drags the ant corpses through town because he wants to use them to make new armor. Then, he hears about the fairy ball starting and sees a crystal. He hopes he can make a contract with a wind fairy because he's an archer. He starts the ritual, and the crystal shakes a lot but then breaks, just like his heart. Later, Earth talks this way and tells them about his failed fairy ritual. Everyone else succeeded with theirs and encourages Earth not to give up. They say there might be a chance in the second half of the event, and the broken item doesn't disappear, so he has another shot. Sway is relieved about solving one problem but wonders why all the fairies seem to like Earth so much. Later, Earth is simply relaxing in the shadow when a small light particle approaches him. He gets up and mentions that for some reason, fairies have been friendly toward him in the past days. He lets the fairy rest on his finger and apologizes for not being able to form a contract all because his crystal is broken. The small fairy then starts playing with the crystal and he checks his stat window. He notices that his skill levels have gone up, which allows him to spend 3 XP points to specialize in another skill. He quickly accepts the trade, thinking that he will be able to fight in a new way if he can master new skills. He decides to try that new skill in his first dungeon. He explores the dark cave and remembers that he used to do the same when he was a small boy. Thankfully to his skill set, he manages to avoid dangerous areas filled with traps. He continues to think about the old times, feeling excited about exploring in total darkness. He thought he could never experience it again, but this game allows him to have the same feeling. He then notices some red lights in a dark area. Turns out it's a spider that attacks him. He's quick to shoot it with his bow and follows up with a wind cutter attack. However, to his surprise, the monster is still alive. The spider attacks him again, forcing him to use one of his new skills, high jump. Despite headbutting the ceiling, Earth manages to land behind the spider. He follows by using a whip to pull the spider into him and uses his new boots to finish the monster off. The spider's corpse disappears, but some strange purple light appears. He realizes that it's darkness fairies and decides to follow them. They take him through some dangerous path, but he manages to stay safe due to his stable center of gravity skill. However, he is surprised when he reaches the path's end. There's a huge number of fairies gathered around a boulder, and he decides to investigate. He pulls boulder to the side and finds a secret door. He opens it up and finds a box with an old ring inside. He decides to keep it as a memory of his adventurers and thanks the fairies. At that same moment, the game masters release a new message. They are announcing the second half of the Fairy Ball event. Its name is the Fairy Battle Tournament. He quickly returns to the main city to watch the official announcement. The game masters reveal their fairies will evolve if they participate. All they need is to win a certain number of player versus player fights. If they manage to, their fairies will evolve and get a new form. However, they cannot fight the same opponents. They also explain the top 16 players will be invited to a tournament with new amazing rewards. Also, with this new game update, players will be able to get titles to show off. However, there will be some rare titles based on their playstyle. They also announce the most important thing to Earth. People who have failed to make a contract with a fairy will be able to repair their crystal if they fight against players. And those repaired crystals will not only have a guaranteed success rate to get a fairy, but there's a high chance of getting an S-rank one. They will also implement a new system where fairies will have an identity and their personality. Everyone gets excited, including Earth. However, he feels like players will start targeting craftsmen who aren't good in combat. He decides to talk about it with his craftsmen friends, but they assure him they will be fine. They basically agreed to blacklist anyone who tries to force them into a fight, which in short means that if someone targets them, that person won't be able to buy anything, forever. Earth is glad they already found a way to protect themselves. Blacks then asks him if he has already gone to the new town. He then explains to Earth that he can use the warp portal to get there, but also warns him that there's a huge number of hardcore PvP players gathering there. 
Blacks also reveals that some people are taking their time and are meeting up to fight in first. Earth thinks that's pretty normal in a game and asks if Blacks will fight someone in first. However, Black simply cares about crafting new items. Earth thinks that's also a way to enjoy the event, but he isn't sure about what he should be doing. A few days later, the new game patch is fully online and Earth logs in. He decides to check the new title system first. However, everyone around is staring at him, mentioning that Earth's title is rare. He opens the stat window and finds out that his title is the Fairy Playboy. To make it worse, he cannot even hide the title from other players, unless he fights one special PvP battle during the event. Earth cannot believe this is happening to him. Everyone, including him, is confused. He thinks this title is humiliating, but at the same time, some fairies start gathering around him. He then decides to fight a battle to remove it. He shouts for help, begging someone to fight him. A girl named Rona appears to save the day and sends him a challenge. He starts crying in happiness and thanks her for her help. She recognizes him, but he doesn't know who she is. She explains to him that she belongs to the blue color, Zwei's Guild. She mentions that she uses martial arts, and she's curious about Earth's kicks. He's about to accept the dual invitation when Rona's fairy flies into his shoulder. Earth is confused, especially because the fairy seems like it's been charmed. Rona is also confused, explaining her fairy is usually shy. Suddenly, the fairy presses the reject dual button. Earth is confused, thinking that Rona doesn't want to fight him. But she gets embarrassed, explaining she doesn't know what her fairy wants. The fairy gets back to Earth's shoulder and starts cuddling him. Everyone around is confused, but they understand that his title doesn't lie. Earth is a fairy playboy, and despite his tries to duel against someone, they all ended in the same way. The fairies refuse to fight him. Rona mentions she has never seen this before, and Earth starts cursing the game masters. He returns to his usual gaming day, which means doing nothing useful, until he's contacted by Rona. She wants some advice because her fairy refuses to eat most of what she gives it. He guesses that she wants him to make some food which the fairy will eat. She's surprised and asks how he knew. Turns out his food stand has a huge queue, because everyone on the server has the same problem. She asks how that did happen. Turns out that a few hours ago, someone tried to feed their fairy with bread. The fairy rejected, and the owner asked Earth to cook something due to his skill. The fairy loved it, and the word spread around. And now, everyone is asking for huge amounts of food for their fairies. To be fair, Earth tried too hard to not stand out. But the opposite happens every single time. In the end, Rona appeared to help in the food stall, and they quickly dealt with the customers. They thank each other for the help, and Earth explains he will be closing the shop because people are now starting to make fairy food. Rona asks what he will be doing from now on, and he realizes that he's been so occupied that he hasn't checked the new patch features. She then invites him to check the new town together, and they warp there. Earth is pretty impressed by the new town named Nexia, and they decide to check the PvP area. The two competitors are a guy with a blue parrot and a guy with a wolf. Rona quickly notices something weird about the wolf and asks Earth about it. He explains she's right, but they decide to watch the fight. The parrot guy uses his fairy cast wind magic and the two players start battling out with their swords. It's an intense duel, but they seem good as they block each other's attacks. The wolf guy manages to push the other back and orders his wolf to use a fire attack. However, the wolf pulls a Pikachu move and ignores his owner. The guy is confused, telling the wolf to hurry up, but every command is refused. Rona and Earth are confused about what's happening. Usually, fairies don't disobey commands. The parrot then uses lightning magic on the guy and its owner finishes the opponent off with his sword. The duel ends and Rona asks if Earth knows why the wolf fairy ignored its master's commands. He states the other dude is a slave fairy user. Rona is confused by that term, but Earth explains that's the term they use for people who abuse their fairies. Basically, the guy decided to force the wolf to do what he wanted by hitting it. Therefore, the wolf now refuses to listen to him. The guy then gets up, completely annoyed, and prepares to hit the fairy wolf as revenge for not obeying. Earth quickly realizes that something bad is about to happen. Rona asks him what's going on and he explains that he once saw an online video of a slave fairy user. Basically, he mistreated the fairy so much that the system decided to punish him. The guy had to fight his own fairy. Not only that, but the guy's fairy evolved into an S rank. In the end, the guy lost the fight and took away his contract crystal. Luckily, this time's idiot knew what would happen and decided to walk away. 
Rona didn't know about this system, but Earth explained some old games use this type of system. Basically, he reveals that in those games, the pets can go out of control or attack her if she gives too many unreasonable orders. She thinks that type of system is too old. Yet, Earth simply mentions that the current games go easy on players. Therefore, he thinks the game masters are trying to make this game based on an old school MMO. He then says his goodbye, explaining he will be logging out. In the real world, Earth removes his VR headset, thinking that some people like Rona really care about their fairies. Yet, there are some people who don't, but he understands that it's up to the players to play however they want. He later logs back into the game and focuses on crafting. He's then approached by the other slave fairy user. The guy reveals he wants to talk to Earth because of his title. Earth is annoyed by it but hears the guy out. Turns out this metal dude wants to know how to make up with his fairy. As you expect, the wolf's behavior toward Earth is caring and gentle. The guy explains he knows what will happen to him if he keeps acting like this and asks for Earth's help. Earth asks why the guy was mean to the wolf. In short, the guy was confused by the system and looked for videos online. Everyone was uploading videos where they treated their fairies badly or like circus animals. So, the guy followed the same behavior. However, with the new patch, fairies got a personality and everything changed. The wolf refused to listen to him, and he even hit it sometimes to make it obey him. The guy regrets doing it and asks for Earth's help again, even promising to pay him. Our boy refuses to get paid but tells the guy to not treat the wolf as he used to. He then gives the guy some advice, you know the basic stuff. Start treating your wolf like a friend. The guy is confused, but Earth goes in deep. He tells him to fight, share a meal, and take breaks together. He even tells him to say goodbye to the wolf every time he logs out. That way, his wolf will slowly see him as a friend and follow his commands. The guy then earth to make something delicious for his wolf to eat. He quickly prepares it, and the guy feeds his wolf first. Despite being suspicious, the wolf accepts the food. The guy starts tearing down, realizing that his companion is starting to slowly accept him. He thanks Earth and walks away with his fairy. However, there is someone who finds the whole situation interesting. Earth asks who this guy is, and the guy answers that he's Silver, someone who wants to talk to Earth in private. Earth accepts to talk to the old man, whom he isn't sure if it's a player or an NPC. Inside his house, Earth notices the old man's equipment, movements, and level seem to be above his. The old man sits and asks Earth if he ever met someone named Glad. Earth thinks a bit and says no. He explains there was a rumor that Glad was targeting players who have the fairy playboy title. Earth is a bit confused and asks who Glad is. The old man explains that Glad was a former member of his party. Despite having problems with speech and behavior, Glad was a great tank. Earth suspects that Glad was expelled from the party. The old man confirms it, explaining that Glad became arrogant and began to look down on the other members. The old man reveals Glad was furious with the last event because he was the only member of their party who couldn't make a contract with a fairy. In the end, he became so upset that he took out his anger on everyone and was expelled from the group. The old man then tells his fairy to show up, making Earth realize it's in a rank light Valkyrie. And because of her, Glad always rejected the old man's attempt to help him. However, with the last update, Glad was able to get a new contract crystal and made a contract with a Darkness Fox Fairy. Since then, he's been going around challenging people to special PvP duels. Earth asks if Glad is challenging people because he still feels humiliated for failing to get a contracted fairy in the first event. The old man explains Glad will use the last day of the event as a way to show his strength and asks Earth to be careful. Earth promises to be careful, and the old man walks away. However, Earth thinks it's dangerous to simply believe in a one-sided story. He ends up taking the old man's warning into account and decides to reduce the time he spends in the city. He fights monsters to level up and get materials, but the main reason is that other players cannot challenge him if he's already in combat. He goes on defeating bears to stock up on the meat and fur. He plans to use the fur to create cloaks because the body armor everyone uses doesn't protect their backs. He headshots a bear from a distance, but the fight doesn't end there. The bear gets angry and starts to charge at Earth. Earth then uses his mirror arrow skill to create two copies of himself, and each copy shoots an arrow. The bear gets hit, and Earth uses a whip to restrain him to the ground. He then follows up by jumping into the air and kicking the bear. He easily defeats it, and his kick skill reaches level 50. He decides to evolve his kick to sliding charge, which not only can tackle opponents while sliding but can also allow him to quickly escape. He's pretty happy with his skill, but he also notices the game UI has been updated, making it simpler to understand what's going on. He then decides to head to the mines and get steel and light metal to make some items with it. Suddenly, he ends up hitting an explosive ore. 
he alerts everyone around to be careful because it could explode, however, everything is fine. Everyone around then mentions that despite being pretty much a grenade, players don't use explosive ore because it can explode at any time. But there are still some people who use them and are called bomb masters. After getting his materials, Earth decides to visit Faust, his blacksmith boss, but he notices something on his map. Lately, his danger perception skill has been pointing out something. Upon getting inside the blacksmith, Blacks immediately asks if Earth is planning to create another weird item today. Despite taking it as a joke, Blacks is pretty right. Earth plans to make a new arrowhead and a new metal whip. The arrowhead is created based on a twisted dagger, which makes it easier to scoop out meat. He then starts his work, first by shaping the ore ingot into an arrow, and then trying to twist it. Despite several failed attempts, he somehow manages to create it. However, he realizes that it's way harder than a normal arrowhead. Despite the hard process, this twisted arrow has plus 15 attack points with several passives. When the arrow hits, it will give a wound and apply a fissure effect that will make the opponent lose health over time. Earth then starts working on his whip. Usually, it's not a weapon that can be made out of metal, but he knows there's a way to make it using light metal. That's a strange and special type of metal that it's not only light, but also has some decent durability. He simply needs to heat and stretch the light metal ingot several times until it reaches an identical size to his current whip. Aside from that, he also decides to mass-produce triangular fish-like scales and attach them to the whip. After completing it, the system reveals that it will wound any enemy that gets hit. He then goes to another place where he can work on his explosive ore safely. He knows using the explosive ore right now is a heavy risk for him, so he needs to use his medicinal skills to make something safer to use. He starts to mix some oil and herbs along with the piece of ore to adjust the speed at which it ignites. He managed to create three samples of different oils. He then starts testing the oils and throws bottle it to the floor. But nothing happens. He then throws Bottle B, creating a huge explosion that almost deletes him by taking 80% of his health points. He realizes that one is too powerful and should only be used as a last resort to take the enemy down with himself. For that reason, he decides to call it the Hell Mine Oil. He then drinks a pot to restore his health and tests Bottle C. The explosion isn't a big deal but that's what Earth was looking for. He quickly realizes this is his best sample made until now and names it Enhanced Oil. He decides to create more of it to use it against bears to raise his level. He throws the oil at a group of three bears and defeats each bear with different skills. Earth then uses his new whip to restrain a bear and kicks him. Another bear gets finished by wind magic, and the last one gets headshotted by an arrow. He looks at his drops and thinks this oil made his hunting a lot easier. However, it has a downside. He won't be able to raise his skills if he relies too much on it. The system then alerts him that his hunting bow skill reached level 50 and he learned Gatling Arrow. Not only that, but his wind magic has also reached that level and he now knows how to fly. The system then alerts him that since he reached level 50 in both hunting bow and wind magic, he can combine them to learn a unique skill. It's called the Aeolian Dust Hunting Bow, which allows him to use wind magic when shotting an arrow. However, he won't be able to learn any high-rank hunting bow and wind magic skills. Despite being interested in more magic skills, Earth decides to combine because bows or wind are good combinations. He then decides to test all his new skills. Gatling Arrow allows him to throw arrows into the air and shoot them in quick succession. His fly ability allows him to jump higher and glide for a certain amount of time. He then decides to return to the city and asks a craftsman to use the bear fur to make him a leather cape. Suddenly, there's a game announcement. The developers explain the fairy PvP event has now ended and they will reveal the 16 people who will join the final tournament. Sway then appears and tells Earth they probably failed to join the tournament because they didn't pay attention to the event. The 16 selected players are then announced and Earth notices that the old man and Glad managed to qualify. They're the players with the highest win rate. Despite the conversation he had with the old man, Earth thinks their battle will be interesting and he wants to watch it. The tournament shortly begins, and everyone goes to the arena to watch it. Earth decides to use his long-distance vision skill and sees there are a few players who have the same title as him. The initial battles begin, and Earth realizes how much the players evolve their fairies. If he managed to enter the tournament, he would probably have a 10% chance to win his matches. However, he notices something strange. The fairy who wins absorbs particles of light from the one that is defeated. He doesn't understand what's going on, but he watches every match until the finals. It's the old man against Glad. Glad is quite cocky and asks the old man to give up, but the old man simply says that he must correct him. Glad is confused and asks how, but the old man simply replies he will clap him. 
The fight begins and the two rush against each other. Vlad blocks the attack and reveals that he knows the old man will use his axe to distract him and then knock him off balance. The old man gets back and Vlad goes on the offensive. The battle goes crazy, with each of the two using their fairies and skills to attack each other. The old man's fairy manages to hit Glad and paralyze him for a second. The old man tries to finish him off, but Glad uses wind magic to dash back. Glad uses this chance to attack the old man, and his fox uses its flame to deal the final blow. Glad is announced as the winner of the tournament, and something strange happens. His wolf turns into a small circle of light and then evolves into a fox girl. Glad is happy that happened and tells her to be useful, but the fox girl refuses to follow him. Glad is confused, but the fox girl explains this event was created to select the next ruler of the fairies. She claims there's a prophecy that mentions that their ruler is not only strong but also well versed in the arts of war. Glad still doesn't understand but she explains that fairies aren't warlike creatures. For that reason, they decided to learn how to fight from humans. The winner of those fights absorbs the experiences of the loser until the champion becomes the new ruler. Glad gets annoyed because fairies are using players and ditching them. But the fox girl explains most of the fairies will stay by their player's side. She will simply leave him because their contract has ended. In short, she only helped him get revenge against the old man. She explains they never cared about each other, and for that reason, they have never become partners to accomplish their own goals. He yells at her, but she explains that to him, he's just playing a game. But this is her real world. Earth then realizes the fox girl isn't speaking like an AI but as a real person. But he decides to ignore it for now. The fox girl then tells Glad she will let him make a contract with a fairy that is as strong as her. But he refuses to accept it and wants to take her down. Since the two are unable to concede, they begin a duel. However, the fox girl quickly launches five different spells at the same time. Glad manages to dodge it and attack her, but she simply avoids it and paralyzes with shock. She then uses more skills to defeat him. Once everything is over, the fairy summons the old man back since Glad was taught a lesson. She then summons all the fairy playboy players and thanks them for not joining the fairy PvP event. As a result, they will be rewarded with a fairy. However, Earth is special because he will have to fight against her. Earth is confused, but she repeats that she wants to fight him. The fairy says that she cannot keep giving prizes for free because he didn't participate in the tournament. Earth agrees with her, thinking that would be unfair for the finalists. That's why she wants to be fair, by fighting Earth while ignoring the other fairy playboys. She mentions that as a reward, Earth will receive part of her powers, and he doesn't even need to win the fight. However, if he wins, the better his rewards will be. Earth accepts, yet suddenly his fairy playboy title disappears. We then see the shady developer team, mentioning the event has reached its climax. Earth takes some minutes to think about his strategy. He recognizes that he has pretty much no chance of winning. She just needs to hit him with a high explosion, and he will meet his respawn point. However, he has one advantage. He had already seen her fighting once. He's also sure that she has no experience fighting someone who uses a bow as a main weapon. He knows that he must be fast because his endurance is low, and if the fight is prolonged, he will lose. However, the only way to beat her is by fighting dirty. He prepares his oils and the two prepare to begin the duel. The countdown reaches zero and Earth quickly turns around and slides away. The fairy is confused but quickly realizes that he gained distance because he's an archer. Earth decides to shoot his first arrow with 70% power, but she uses wind magic to block it. Despite being initially confused, he quickly realizes the arrow can deal with the magic if he uses his full power. The fairy starts summoning several fire lances, but he manages to avoid them. He then shoots another arrow, and she tries to stop it with fire magic. However, the magic fails to block the arrow and she's hit on the shoulder. The fairy then decides she must stop him by closing their distance. However, Earth was already prepared for it and pulled out his flask. She initially thinks it's a potion and tries to stop him from drinking it. But he throws it at her, causing a cloud of smoke. The fairy surrounded by the smoke, realizes the flask contains poison. Earth then throws some flasks of enhanced oil at her, creating several explosions. She quickly realizes that she made a mistake by not restricting items. Earth simply replies, that as a human, he needs to think about strategies to win when faced against someone stronger. The fairy then summons Earth walls to block his field of view and prevent him from attacking. However, Earth quickly activates his stealth skill. The fairy tries to detect him, but she can't. The wall spell starts to vanish, and she tries to locate him. However, Earth appears from behind and uses his whip to restrain her. 
he follows up with his sliding charge skill and combines it with his new bow skills. He throws arrows into the air and shoots them like a machine gun, followed by his double clone skill. After taking several arrows in the face, Earth uses fly and big jump to shoot a piercing arrow to her core. He then kicks the same arrow deeper into her body, and the fairy dematerializes. Despite the audience being hyped out by what they just watched, Earth realizes he made a big mistake. He showed his combo skills to a huge audience, which will make them pester him in the future. Not only that, but they will also request him to make enhanced oil and challenge him for battles. He decides to run away while he still can. However, the fairy appears again. She accepts defeat and tells him it's time for his reward. She tells him to take out his broken fairy contract crystal and the ring of fairy king. He's confused by it and asks if she's talking about the ring he found in the dungeon. Upon checking his fairy contract crystal, she mentions that he's quite unpredictable because he already has five lights in it. She then calls forth for the children of light and two more lights appear inside it. She then reconstructs the crystal and the ring. She tries to put the ring into his finger, which he tries to reject because it seems like she's asking him in marriage. However, she uses a spell to increase her strength and finally manages to put the ring on his finger. The system indicates that this ring is a unique item in the game as it contains all six elements of fairy power. Equipping it allows passage to the fairy's country. However, there's a problem. He cannot take it off despite the crazy stats it has. His attack, defense, and mana recovery are increased by 10%, while his mana usage is reduced by 5%. When attacking there's also the possibility to summon an illusion of the fairy queen for 3 seconds. But the most interesting one is a new title. The one who even charmed the fairy queen. He knows this will mean trouble in the future. The fairy queen then disappears, and the event is finally finished. A few days later, Earth finds out that players who watched the fight are starting to learn bow skills. He used to be the only player in the game who was an archer, but now it's a lot more popular. Earth continues to focus on making his oils but he's feeling a bit sad. He picked his bow and wind skills because they were considered trash by everyone. However, people now realize they're extremely strong. Suddenly, the fairy queen appears making him confused. He asks her how she knew where he was, but she replies the ring is also a teleport point. She teases him, saying she came to bring love to the lonely him who doesn't have a fairy, but he smacks her in the head. He knows she's just there to skip work and orders her to return. He then decides to return to the city, but he feels uncomfortable because everyone is looking at him. They comment on how he's the fairy queen's husband. Suddenly he hears a random guy shouting at someone to stop walking. Earth decides to keep walking before he gets caught up in some random confusion as he wants to hunt and try something new. He remembers the fairy queen mentioning that whoever equips the ring can learn the prism nova spell. He decides to wear down a bear with his arrows and then use his whip to restrain him. He quickly starts casting the spell and after a long incantation, a huge shiny ball appears on top of the bear and petrifies it. He's initially confused, but after some tries he realizes that Prism Nova grants a random of normal status effect to his opponents. He then manages to find a remote spot and sets up his provisional kitchen. He tries to increase his overall cooking efficiency by making several dishes at the same time. He talks about the spell to the Fairy Queen, who explains that Paralysis and Petrify have low odds of triggering, and the spell itself has a huge cooldown. She tries to eat his food but he smacks her on the head, explaining he intends to sell those dishes, not eat them. She tries to reason with him, stating that her country only makes sweets and she's tired of it. He knows she's working her hardest for her country's citizens, but that doesn't mean that she can come to annoy him when she feels like it. They're suddenly interrupted by a random ugly dude. The guy complains that Earth is ignoring him in the city, making Earth realize this is the annoying guy. This ugly dude introduces himself as Nazar from Bow of Apollo's Guild. The guy gets almighty and explains their goal is to rescue archers from the oppression, despite Earth being the one who's actually doing it. Of course, Earth understands this guy is dumber than a rock. The guy keeps his stupid face on, mentioning he came here to invite Earth to his guild with the lowest seat. But Earth simply replies, not interested, I'm out. Look at this dumb face. Earth quickly opens his food stall in the city and tells the fairy queen to leave, but she refuses to. He then finally gives up and gives her some food he prepared. He mentions she's a big eater, but she simply calls him silly for not understanding why she's hanging out with him. She then suddenly vanishes away, promising to return soon. Earth then decides to go to Black's workshop and work on his equipment. He then starts to feel bothered because everyone is staring and surrounding him closely. Black simply explain they're doing it because he's famous, but Earth asks them to distance themselves from him. Earth then starts working on his gear, first the X-type bow. 
the bow's durability has decreased, and he now needs to make a new one. He decides to replace both the main body and the strings. He uses excellent wood that he got from the second town to make the main body, and uses light metal for the brace. Basically, he improved the bow quality, which made it a lot stronger. His original version had plus 32 attack points, but this one has plus 46. He then starts working on his bladed shoes. He decides to replace the main material with light metal. It's a lot lighter and enables him to armor it properly, making it more robust and stable. He adds new twisted arrow spikes to the soles, increasing its power and this time, doesn't create a side blade. Instead, he adds three blades, imitating fangs to the toe tip, and three twisted arrowheads to the top of the shoe. This way, he will be able to stab monsters when he kicks them. Not only that but he makes the fangs detachable, making it easy to replace. As a result, his fang leg blade gives him an additional 10 defense and 29 attack points. With that done, he only now needs to do one thing. He returns to the crafter where he ordered his cloak to be made and notices that she almost had a perfect item grade. However, she doesn't charge more for it. Earth is confused because it's quite cheap, but she mentions that she will always charge the price she asked for regardless of the grade. He wants to test it by hunting when he suddenly receives a message from Iam, the guild master of the Bow of Apollo. He agrees to meet her and notices several archers around. Iam quickly introduces herself, and Earth asks why she asked to meet him. She quickly apologizes for Nazar's behavior and explains that Earth became famous after his duel against the Fairy Queen, and Nazar saw Earth as an opportunity to increase their guild strength because they only accept archers. Earth replies that it's fine because he doesn't mind at all, but Iam explains that Nazar reached a whole new level of dumb. Turns out that he's trying to recruit more guild members by mentioning that Earth is also their member. Not only Iam but every guild member apologizes to Earth, who quickly tells him to raise their head. Iam then mentions that they punish Nazar's actions by demoting him from lieutenant to ordinary guild member. They won't banish him from the guild, but he lost all the privileges he had. Earth thinks that's a good way to punish Nazar and agrees. Iam then gets a bit personal, mentioning how she watched his fight and that he's every archer's hope. Earth doesn't feel the same way, he just wanted to play a bad class to avoid any attention. Meanwhile at the dev's room, they all talk about Earth, who defeated the fairy queen and won its friendship. Not only that, but he also became a huge influence on the other players. Therefore, they decide to track Earth's account. Earth's friend Sway appears and spills the beans about a new thing called a status effect. It's called break arms, and if a player gets hit with it, they can't hold a weapon for a while. Plus, if a player takes more than 25% of their total HP as damage to their arms, they'll be paralyzed or turned into a statue. But then, there's an announcement about a new dungeon called a challenge from the departed. The floors in this dungeon are totally random each time you go in, full of traps, and the goal is to reach the 10th floor. Now, Earth decides he needs a shield to tackle this mysterious dungeon. He's sure he can't get far just by dodging, especially in a tight dungeon. Earth pulls an all-nighter finishing his project, and voila, he made a shield. But not your run-of-the-mill shield, this one's got a hidden compact bow. It's small but deadly and accurate thanks to a little scope sight he added. Releasing the grip turns it back into a regular shield. It's a weapon tailored just for him, and it's super powerful. Plus, even if he gets hit with Arm Breaker, he can still attack from a distance. Later, Earth heads to the new dungeon and discovers a group of off-brand Power Rangers. The Black Ranger is sick and they are desperate for a replacement. They ask Earth, who realizing he might not get far in the dungeon alone, agrees to join their makeshift squad. The discount Power Rangers are all hyped up and ready to dive into the dungeon. But Earth pumps the brakes. He takes a moment to analyze the dungeon and quickly figures out they're in for some bad luck. 15 traps in the very first room alone, some of them being instant death traps. Earth takes the lead, and they follow him. Blue Ranger is relieved that things are going well, and Red Ranger never doubted Earth's strength, believing that anyone married to the Fairy Queen has to be strong. They make it past the first area, and Earth lets the rangers take charge. They encounter danger, but these rangers wipe out skeleton monsters in an instant. Earth's relieved he can focus on trap detection. On the third floor, they face more danger, but the pink ranger confidently tells the others to stand back and watch her work. She takes out a few monsters on the fourth floor, but these ones are tougher than the ones on the first floor. The guy with the axe is surprised when his attacks don't work, so Earth steps in to explain that physical attacks won't cut it against these specific monsters. Earth, using wind magic on his bows, cleans house with his special attacks. They find the entrance to the fourth floor, but a whopping 40 minutes have already passed in the dungeon. With only an hour to complete it, they decide to adjust their goal to just reaching the fifth floor. 
on the fourth floor, Earth gets a weird feeling like the Grim Reaper is caressing his face. Something's off, and they hear a blood-curdling scream begging for help. These wannabe heroes leap into action, and Earth reluctantly follows. A trap shuts a door behind them, and Earth realizes they're stuck until they complete the room's quest. The room is filled with skeleton monsters, and the rangers are pumped for battle. Earth scans for traps, luckily finding none. With no holding back, Earth decides to fight at full strength. Everyone showcases flashy and unique attacks, a bit too flashy for Earth's taste, but undeniably powerful. The room is eventually cleared, our group is out of time, and they're sent back outside. Red Ranger, impressed by Earth, is itching to ask about his level. Earth doesn't spill the exact number but admits he's over 20. In reality, he's over level 30, but Earth decides not to drop that bomb on someone he just met. They split up their not-so-impressive winnings, Earth adds them as friends, and they bid their goodbyes. Later, Earth realizes he needs to disarm traps faster to reach the 10th floor, so, he decides to build a tool to enhance his thief skill. Black steps in to help and makes the lockpicking tool even better than Earth hoped. Earth gets inspired and works even harder, making a ton of arrows for the next dungeon run. Suddenly, the Fairy Queen reappears, looking like a mess. She explains that giving out the crystals was easy, but dealing with weird and uncomfortable questions made her so mad that she had to defeat those players in battle. She even revived them just to beat them repeatedly. To lighten her mood, she cleverly slips a marriage certificate into a list of things Earth could do. Earth, baffled by her crazy ideas, flat out refuses to sign. Later, the Fairy Queen is amazed by how delicious Earth's meat bun is, and he proudly announces that his cooking skill hit level 50, allowing him to use a steamer. She's glad to be the first to taste it. Earth, sensing the difficulty of being a queen, decides not to push her away this time. But she gets a bit too comfortable, calling him husband, and Earth wonders if he just made a huge mistake. For the past few days, Earth made a set of tools and continued to explore the new dungeon. His goal was to improve his disarming and lockpicking skills. However, he was still making a lot of mistakes and got killed by the traps. Yet, he easily managed to reach level 50 in his thief skill, his hardest choice by far, as he needed to upgrade the skill to either a superior thief or benevolent thief. The superior thief is an upgraded version of his current skills and only increases his success rate. The benevolent thief, however, enables him to steal the monster's items. Not only that, but it can also add bonus damage to surprise attacks. Still, it costs a lot more experience to evolve. He decides to pick the benevolent one and returns to disarm traps practice. He quickly managed to increase his success rate with experience and tried out the benevolent thief skills. Basically, he was simply robbing the same skeleton repeatedly. Due to that, he quickly learned how the monsters in the dungeon worked. In short, monsters are attracted to the light, so he started exploring in total darkness. Of course, he had to rely on his long-distance vision skill, allowing him to see in the dark and avoid unnecessary fights. This skill and strategy allowed him to avoid many fights and speedrun the dungeon. He reached a staircase that would lead him to the ninth floor with only a bit over five minutes left to go. He continues rushing his way through the dungeon until he finds a huge room. He sees the stairs to the last floor, but this place is filled with traps. Earth gets desperate. The stairs to the last floor are in front of him, but he doesn't have time to disarm the traps. With a few seconds to go, Earth decides to man up and tries to run through it. He uses his high jumping skill with fly to glide and avoid the traps. However, that's not enough to make him reach the stairs. He ends up landing on a trap, and he rolls over avoiding the weapons that tried to hit him. He manages to get to the stairs and gets confused because he wasn't kicked from the dungeon. He checks the timer and finds out it stopped with still 2 milliseconds to go. He's still super confused, but he decides to heal first by drinking some potions. He doesn't understand why he's still there and thinks the system regards him as someone who reached the last floor. Despite everything, Earth tries to forget it because he's the first player to reach the last floor. He goes down an infinite number of steps until he suddenly hears a voice. Alarmed, Earth asks who it is. The voice mentions he didn't expect anyone to even reach the last floor. The voice introduces itself as Andre, a knight from the Empire. Andre mentions that the stairs are quite long, so he will be telling Earth his story along the way. Andre reveals he was once ordered by his nation to investigate this place. He had an army to help him clear this dungeon, but they all got wiped out by monsters and traps. In the end, he was the only person who managed to reach the dungeon's last room, but there was nothing inside. It didn't even have air for him to breathe, and that's how he joined his crew. He reveals that he was then transformed into a skeleton knight and forced to protect the dungeon. Earth is confused and asks if the room is still there. But Andre reveals he destroyed it so that people wouldn't have such an embarrassing death trap as he did. 
Earth thinks that despite becoming a monster, Andre still tried to stay a noble knight by doing it. Andre then mentions that Earth will meet him at the bottom of the stairs. Earth then asks what Andre wants, and the answer is to be killed. Earth stops walking, confused by the answer, but Andre says he already endured long enough. He's refusing to let his heart become a monster, but he's reaching his limit. He wants Earth to free him from this curse and let him join his comrades. Suddenly, the stairs start to disappear, making Earth run back in panic. However, he's still not fast enough and ends up falling into an endless pit. He wakes up a few minutes later and hears some noise, it's Andre. The skeleton starts laughing like a maniac and starts talking to himself. He reveals that Andrew finally gave in, and now he controls the knight's body. Earth then gets up and simply headshots him with an arrow, making the skeleton complain. Earth tells him to shut up because he's a creep and shoots another one. The skeleton uses a shield to block it and promises to make Earth suffer before his death. The skeleton then uses a skill to dash forward and in a split second is about to slash Earth in half. But Earth manages to dodge to the side, impressed by the speed. The skeleton uses the same move again, forcing Earth to block with his shield. The skull head is impressed, and Earth mocks him a bit. However, deep down, he knows it's doomed. The skull head is fast and hits hard. The skeleton commends him for deflecting the strike and dashes forward again. Earth sticks to a defensive position, just to leap back and throw an enhanced oil bottle. The skeleton is annoyed because of the flames, but Earth simply replies he doesn't use swords. He shoots another arrow, but the skeleton not only parries it, but he also uses a flying slash to break Earth's bow. The skeleton then tries to end it with his speed, but Earth dodges it. The skull head laughs at Earth, mentioning that he cannot do anything because his bow no longer exists. He tells him to give up, but Earth refuses to, mentioning he still has his hidden weapon, his right arm. The skull face is confused, but Earth turns his shield into a crossbow and shoots. The bone guy dodges it, and Earth continues to shoot while moving. The skeleton closes the distance and attacks Earth who tries to dodge every hit. However, there's a problem with this shield bow. It can only shoot fire special arrows and he cannot use any arts with it. It lacks power, but it fires faster than a big bow. He continues his relentless moving and shooting pattern, making the skeleton mad. The skull face decides to use his shield charge and Earth dodges it. However, the skeleton uses his shield chaser skill to change direction. As a result, Earth gets pinned against the wall and is affected by a stun effect. Andre then mentions it's time to send Earth to his gods, but that only makes our boy confused. The Skullhead continues his monologue, mentioning humans pray to their gods when something happens. So, he thinks that's because humans love gods so much. He tries to slice Earth in half, but the stun expires in time, giving him a chance to dodge. He suddenly dropkicks the skeleton's face and replies there are no gods in this world. And that's because the only thing he will find in this world is the human will to survive no matter what. The skeleton asks to see Earth's will and raises his sword. Earth promises he will and runs towards Skullface. He suddenly leaps into the wall and uses his whip to restrain the skeleton's sword, followed by a kick in the faceless. But that's still not enough, Earth starts casting a magic spell to finish it all. However, the spell chanting takes one eternity later. The Skullhead uses this chance to power up and slice Earth in half. The magic starts to activate, restraining the skeleton's movements. Earth is about to reach the middle of his long spell, but Skullface manages to swing his sword but his lack of eyes means he only managed to destroy Earth's shield. Earth continues his spell until we reach eternity, giving Skullface enough time to prepare his swing again. The spell finally activates in time, however, the result isn't what Earth expected. Earth thinks he's done for, but the Fairy Queen suddenly appears by his side. He's confused but then remembers his ring has a low chance of her phantom appearing. She casts a blizzard spell and smiles at him while fading away. He then uses this chance to shoot the skull head, thinking he didn't expect her to help him. He launches several bow attacks, using all of his skills. He tries to finish it off with an explosion caused by his enhanced oil. The skeleton falls to the floor and Earth sees Andre's soul. The knight smiles and commends him on his victory. Andre mentions that Earth managed to defeat Boneless before his soul disappeared. Therefore, he still has some time to thank him. Earth asks if he fulfilled his wish, and Andre keeps up his shiny smile. Earth asks what is this all about, and Andre simply explains he is desperate to be free, but he never expected a solo player to actually free him. Before disappearing, Andre entrusts Earth with his sword, mentioning that despite being worn out, it should be considered an antiquity, and worth a lot. He also mentions Earth's words about not existing gods in this world. 
Andre believes they exist because Earth just stopped him from becoming a complete monster. Andre and his companion vanish and an urgent announcement is made. It's about Earth's clearing of the dungeon and event. The announcement also contains information about the new weapon called Night Sword. However, they will reveal the details in the future. Earth logs out and realizes they will probably release another weapon in the future secret boss events. Meanwhile, in a dark room, the developers are making a report. The woman mentions their AI called PN0EA seems to be enjoying herself. The guy simply replies her learning advancement should be related to Earth. However, there's a bit of a problem. The AI named PN1EB is complaining that she's bored. But the guy simply replies they need to wait a bit more. Later, Earth meets Sway's group to do a dungeon. Earth thanks them for inviting him. Sway explains they invited him because Nora and Kazamine won't be able to play today. That's why they invited him because they wanted a thief player who can also deal damage. Earth is confused because they will be only having Miley as a healer. She then explains that they will be fine because they invited a healer to come. He's surprised and asks if that person hasn't appeared. Sway apologizes, mentioning she's a bit late. Earth replies it's okay and he can wait. However, the members quickly mention the new player is quite rude sometimes. Earth understands he must literally ignore her. Sway apologizes because he literally just recruited a random player without caring about her character. Suddenly, Eliza, the new member appears and mentions they all came to greet her. Sway starts his ranting, telling her to apologize because she arrived late. Sway then tries to introduce her to Earth, explaining she's a good magician, so he doesn't have to worry. Earth realizes Sway must have a rough life because he even had to introduce her. However, she refuses to apologize and starts mocking Earth for being a weak archer. Earth grins, saying she will be checking his skills inside the dungeon. Inside, Earth starts opening the doors by picking the locks. Roke mentions that inviting Earth was the right decision because there were too many traps. Earth mentions they are common, however, some of those can one-hit kill them. Therefore, everyone should be careful. However, Eliza is still complaining. They easily manage to reach the fifth floor and Sway decides to take a break. Eliza is annoyed because she wants to brainlessly rush to reach the sixth floor. She complains they've been inside for 30 minutes already and they must hurry up. The group explains there are several dangerous monsters on that floor, so they must take a safe approach. But Eliza doesn't believe they're that dangerous. Earth explains they have lesser liches on that floor and those monsters are immune to physical attacks. Not only that, but they also apply abnormal status that restrains the players. Players usually call them the trauma generators. Eliza starts to feel worried, but Miley explains she can dispel freeze and paralysis, and Eliza can deal with the petrifying effect. Roke also explains that her attacks have magic attributes, therefore she should be fine. Sway says that they should be able to deal with a lesser lick. Earth joins the confidence group when he suddenly has a notification. He reveals to the group that there are 12 monsters approaching them, four of whom are lesser liches. Sway asks if Earth can find any traps inside this room, but our boy replies there aren't. Sway tells everyone to prepare because they will be fighting there. Everyone gets hyped out and Miley gives everyone some buffs. Well, except Eliza who thinks she's having a nightmare right now. Sway tells her to grow a pair and get ready. She follows orders and starts preparing her spell. Earth is ready to attack when suddenly four lesser liches appear from the walls. He initiates the attack with wide arrow, creating three copies of it. Eliza and Miley follow up by casting Holy Ray and Explosion. They manage to defeat the first lesser lick, but the other three don't back off. The tank steps forward and taunts the monsters, giving Roke a chance to magic punch it to Narnia. Sway then takes his chance to finish it with his magic sword. However, the tank is already suffering from status effects. His arm is petrified, and the liches have started to ignore him. The monsters target the backline, and everyone asks Eliza to use her healing on the tank. Sway explains they will all be wiped out if she doesn't use magic. However, she begins to panic when a lesser lick approaches her. Roke comes in to protect her, and everyone tries their best, except Eliza. Without many options, Earth tells them to get down and he throws his enhanced oils. This creates a major explosion and Earth tells her to wake up and heal the tank. She gets up and uses her healing magic, allowing the group to attack. After the fight, Eliza is still complaining about Earth because he could have used his enhanced oils right away. Earth tries to explain he doesn't have that many to randomly waste them. Sway starts to get angry, telling Eliza to stop complaining about Earth. Eliza then finally decides to learn accountability and apologizes. Later, the timer finally runs out and they're teleported outside. 
Despite having a capable party, they struggled a lot. Sway's group then decides to call it a day and leaves. Earth decides to also go, but there's someone watching him from the distance. Later, Earth notices there are two new weapons in the game, the Japanese bow and a katana. Suddenly a girl approaches him, asking if he's Earth. He notices her dragon horns and pointy ears and asks who she is. She replies she's the fairy queen's younger sister. Despite being confused, he asks why she is visiting him. She mentions there are several reasons, but the main reason is because she wants a taste. Earth is confused, but she turns the riz on, saying the taste of his lips. In typical fashion, Earth smacks her in the head just like he does to her sister. However, this freak actually enjoys the smack, mentioning she understands why her sister is so into him. Not only that, but she also mentions her sister said that he makes delicious food. He tries to refuse it, mentioning he needs to go to the smithy. She replies that she will be following, explaining that she doesn't get chances to go outside. In the end, Earth falls for it and shows the city around. They check several stores, to which she finds the merchandise quite amusing. He also uses this chance to ask for his cloak to be repaired. However, the crafter simply mentions it's badly damaged. It will be way easier to buy a new one instead of repairing it. Earth realizes this is his mistake and asks if she can craft him some new armor. She asks for his request, and he asks her what she can do with pelt and fur from a wild bear. The crafter girl mentions she loves it when people bring her the materials and asks if he has some metal. He gives her some silver and she plans to make him a full set. It will be the wild bear leather set with silver reinforcement, giving him 70 extra defense points. They agree on the price and make the deal. However, the dragon girl wants some food. He cooks her some steak, and she loves it. In the end, she's just like her sister and eats a lot. Earth then thinks about it and asks if she's also a fairy. However, the girl says she cannot talk about it, and she cannot also give him her name. Earth then decides to call her Ryu. She's confused, but he explains it's a Japanese name for dragon horns. She seems rather happy and says that he's the only one who can call her that. She also reveals she plans to visit him from time to time making him realize she's just like her sister. Suddenly, music plays in the city, it's a game announcement. In short, they revealed a hidden aspect of the game's design. The announcement talked about skills. They evolve by leveling, which is how they learn arts. However, there are some conditions to learn the most powerful arts. Turns out that people must specialize in a single playstyle. If someone wants to use the most powerful physical arts, they can only learn physical attack skills. And if they want to learn the strongest magic arts, they can only learn magic skills. However, there's a problem. They applied the same concept to crafters. Earth complains that will generate some problems. Blacks asks what Earth will do, mentioning they have one month to respect their skills. He reminds him that if he doesn't, he might have problems while fighting. Earth thinks about. He can become stronger if he only focuses on physical attacks. However, he'd rather keep the same as he has right now because that's fun for him. Blax is happy to hear it because all of his part-time crafters decided to respec into fighting. Therefore, he will feel less lonely with Earth around. Earth laughs it out, thinking that making people happy with food is also a strength, something he doesn't want to lose. He later returns to the crafter and is impressed by his new armor set. The crafter mentions that she was confident in making it because the items were high quality. Earth is happy because not only his defense improved, but he also got bonus stats to durability and psyche. She then asks what's his plan with his old armor, mentioning that she would buy it. Earth feels attached to it and replies that he wants to end it himself. The crafter then says that she would love if he took care of this new armor like he did with his older one. Earth smiles and confirms. He thinks the reason for it is because this game allows him to touch the equipment, therefore creating a bond. He even feels a bit sad when it's time to say goodbye. He walks away, but he hears someone calling for him. He looks back and sees the fairy queen. She's all serious and mentions that she has something to tell him. Earth is all ears, but he is surprised when she puts a barrier around them. The fairy queen then apologizes. She then mentions that Earth will never be able to make a contract with a fairy. Earth is confused and asks if fairies hate him that much. However, the fairy queen explains it's the opposite. The fairies love him way too much. Earth is confused, but the fairy queen explains she planned to introduce him to a fairy. She was expecting that they would be able to make a contract soon. That's why she bought six greater S rank fairies alongside her, which he would be choosing from. The fairies explain they were expecting to be on a contract with him. However, all the citizens of the fairy kingdom found out about that plan and 80% of the population gathered in the castle gates, asking to make a contract with him. Earth is surprised by that number. The fairy queen then explains she cannot be unfair to her people. 
and if she allows a fairy to make a contract with him, her country will turn into chaos. Earth brushes it off, saying he understands. She asks if he's mad, mentioning that his journey in battle will become harder without a fairy. But since he's a geezer, he just replies that's life. It should be fun though. She laughs it off, calling him weirdo. But at least, she wants to compensate him with another form of strength. She asks for his hand and he allows it. She then gives him two powers. Those two techniques are recreations of powerful skills created by the fairy ruler. First is seven falling starts, which increases his damage if he lands seven bow shots on a target within 30 seconds. The other one is the sacrifice bow, which costs 90% of max health and 100% of max mana to shoot a powerful arrow. However, it will destroy the current equipped bow. She tells him to be careful while using it, and that his stats should return to normal after some proper rest. However, Earth's biggest problem is to sacrifice his weapon. She tells him to keep it a secret and then asks if check the announcement. The fairy kingdom will open up in the next update. She asks him to visit them and he accepts. Before leaving, he gives them all some food he made. However, that only created plans in the fairy's head to visit him in the future. Days later, Earth is preparing some meals when Zwei asks him if he heard about the campaign. Earth simply replies it was big news. However, one of Sway's guild members is confused. Earth explains there are three other games that use the VR system. There's a fighting game, a first-person shooter, and a mecha game. However, those games all use different types of VR helmets for their specific game. The companies then decided to work together to create a VR helmet that allows players to play any game. They decided to create a huge campaign where players will get coupons giving them 15 days of free access. And that campaign will be applied on the same days and the Fairy Kingdom patch is released. Sway is pretty sure this will increase the game's player base. He tries to steal some steak, but Earth smacks him on the head, telling him it's meant to be sold. Earth then turns to Nora, giving her the right to smack everyone's heads. Of course, she immediately abuses her power. Sway's guild members mention that guilds will start recruiting more players and ask if they will be doing the same. Nora even mentions it's time for them to become a mid-size guild. However, they must train Eliza first, otherwise, the new players will suffer at her hands. Since Earth always helped them, Sway uses this chance to recruit him. Earth gives him a big fat no, explaining he already rejected them an infinite number of times. In his mind, Earth explains he just wants to play for fun, but the main reason is that he has stuff most players shouldn't find out about. Everyone already knows about the queen, but they don't know about her sister. Suddenly, Rue appears, asking if he's preparing a new menu. She tries to steal it, but Earth smacks her on the head, claiming he's going to sell it. Nora, however, is confused and asks who she is. The two ignore the question, and Ryu complains about holding back when there's something delicious in front of her. The two start a huge fight because Earth thinks she eats too much. However, Zwei's guild is confused. They had never seen someone wearing that type of clothes in the game, and they claim that Ryu doesn't look like a fairy. The tank dude asks if Earth won't stop having every girl, despite already having the queen. Zwei uses this chance to complain about how popular Earth is, just for them to get smacked. Earth explains he wished he wasn't so popular because he's losing money just to feed Ryu. However, Zwei's guild ignores his words and thinks that Earth and Ryu are quite close to each other. Ryu then tells them that only Earth is allowed to call her that name. Everyone is shocked, but Zwei tries to threaten Earth, mentioning he will post it in the game forum. Earth replies with a threat, mentioning that if Zwei does that, he won't eat his cooking ever again. Nora then mentions that Earth is not only a fairy playboy, but he also became a dragon keeper. Earth laughs it out, but he worries about what will happen when the fairy kingdom opens. Days later, the fairy kingdom patch is launched, and Earth explains the fairyland is located south of the second city. He explains the castle is in the center, while also having cities and forts in all four directions. But still, the only way to reach it is by walking across the map. Earth follows the group of people and arrives at the northern fortress. He notices how the walls are huge, but the queue to get inside is even bigger. While waiting, a man approaches Earth and asks him to check his ring. Earth starts to think that this ring will give him some sort of permission. He shows the ring, and the man confirms it is the Fairy Queen's ring. He confirms Earth's identity and asks him to follow him. Earth is confused, but he explains the Fairy Queen ordered him to take Earth to her immediately. Earth gets even more confused, but the man simply tells his men to bring something. The players waiting in the queue stare at Earth, thinking this is some sort of event. Earth closes his eyes, hoping that the people will stop noticing him. He then opens them back and notices a huge blue ball in front of him. The ball then moves, revealing to be a bird, and stares at him. The man explains that's a Picarsha, a bird that only some selected people can ride. The man then simply tells him to ride the bird to the capital. 
Earth cannot believe this, but he gets a reality check when some players complain about not being lucky enough. Earth first greets the bird and then hops on top of it. However, he feels like he's sunken in its feathers. The man explains that's normal, as it works as a security belt. The bird then takes off and starts flying toward the castle. Earth is amazed because the bird can expand the height limit. He also noticed there's no wind resistance, which allows him to fly while feeling the wind. The Picarsha keeps flying, passing through towns, and finally arrives at the castle. There, Earth is welcomed by the queen and the other fairies. Earth decides to roleplay, greeting her in a polite manner. However, he's shocked to find out that all this urgency was because she prepared a parade for him. The Picasha bird takes him all around the city, where all the fairy kingdom citizens come to greet him. He thinks to himself that he hates being the center of attention. However, he knows that he would only be wasting time by refusing to take part in it. He greets everyone and notices they even prepared fireworks for him. Therefore, he decides that he will be enjoying this for a moment. Once in the throne room, Earth says that he's grateful for the reception, but claims she went overboard. The fairy queen explains she wanted to show to her citizens that he was in the country. In fact, she reveals that everyone was waiting for his visit because there were rumors that she would keep him to herself. Yet, Earth knows that's not a rumor. She then approaches Earth, making him feel uncomfortable. She looks like she read his thoughts and was to beat him. However, she turns sweet in an instant and asks if she should keep him right now. The ministers tell her to stop and be serious. The queen then asks Earth to continue his normal life in her country for a while. She tries to comfort him, mentioning they won't be protecting him or controlling his actions. Earth then gets up, claiming he will continue his normal life starting tomorrow. He decides to return to the fort town and find an inn to log out, but the queen asks him where he is going. Earth replies that he will go to the inn and sleep. The fairy queen then asks if he would like to sleep in her room. Earth gives a cringing laugh, and like a true G, he runs for his life. He jumps out the window, annoying the queen. While running away, he thinks that he looks like a robber, but it's all fine because he has the thief skill. He rides the Picarsha to the southern forest town and decides to make it his base. This is only because this is the town with the lowest number of players. He quickly manages to complete a quest to kill eight high rabbits and returns to a bar, making everyone surprised. Usually, it takes a few days to hunt those monsters. The girl asks if he found any thief birds and Earth confirms. He mentions that he killed several high rabbits, but the thief girls came and stole it. Earth then uses this chance and asks if there's a place where he can cook. The girl says he can use her kitchen and Earth promises to pay a usage fee. She's surprised, mentioning it's rare to find someone like him. He quickly hops into the kitchen and explains how this bar works. On the first floor, they put requests, while the second one is used as an inn. He will stay here because it's the best place in town. He quickly finishes cooking and tastes his meat. He finds it quite delicious with no strange smell and decides to make Thief Bird grilled sewers, which increases speed. He also tries a rabbit hamburger steak, which only fills your virtual stomach. He tastes it, but that only makes the locals jealous because it's different from what they're used to. Earth promises to make it if they pay for it, but that only attacks more people. In the end, the bar fills up with people who love his cooking. Earth cannot even believe he's cooking like this in the Feraland. He spent his next days completing requests and cooking for everyone. He would also spend some time drinking with the locals, until someone arrived at the bar, telling Earth to hide. Everyone is confused, but the girl explains the fortress chief's daughter is coming there. The bar girl tells Earth to hide under the balcony. Seconds later, the fortress chief daughter arrives, mentioning she heard about Earth who's making dishes there. She asks to see him, promising that she will hire him as a chef. He hears it and thinks she's there to exploit him. The bar girl gently apologizes and lies that Earth already left. However, Dogface doesn't believe her. She claims that nothing good will come by hiding him and that Earth should be honored to work for her. The bar girl lies again, mentioning that Earth went away on an urgent request to another city. The liar's face off comes to an end, but Dogface asks her men to gather information. She complains that he left the town without serving dog food for her. Therefore, she wants to capture Earth. She leaves and everyone is stunned because she is still an idiot. The bar girl apologizes to Earth because she didn't expect Dogface to have her eyes on him. Earth gets confused and asks if she knows who he is. The bar girl confirms, revealing the queen told them who he was, but also asks them to pretend they didn't know him to keep him safe. Earth is surprised, but she reveals that she noticed that he doesn't like to be treated differently. She then explains Dogface is a troublemaker because of her personality. In short, she simply acts almighty because of her father's standing and her father is even dumber because he doesn't notice it and spoils her even more. Earth understands the situation and says that he won't be causing them more trouble. 
he promises to leave quickly, making the locals unhappy. The bar girl mentions she would love to let him stay there if this situation didn't happen. But Earth says it's fine, and thanks her for everything she has done. He's happy that at least he managed to have some fun with everyone, especially because they all complimented his food and drank with him. Earth waited until it was dark before leaving. He used a cloak and ran to the fort gates. He tries to be sneaky while approaching the guards, but they ask if he's Earth. He's surprised that he was already found out. But the guard simply mentions that he knows Earth's situation and they're all tired of dog face. He promises to find evidence of everything she has done and asks Earth to return to the fort once everything calms down. They then open the door and let him escape. Earth tries to run when someone mentions that he's late. He's confused, but the person tells him to jump onto his back so they can escape faster. The person turns out to be a bear, who says that Earth's cooking was delicious and wants to thank him by taking him to the southern city. Earth jumps into the bear's back and they start running. Hours later, the fairy queen gets a report. She's told that Dogface from the southern fortress decided to exploit a human adventurer. The fairy queen gets mad, mentioning must stop this because they've been trying to build a relationship with humans. However, she cannot believe when she's told that Earth is the adventurer. Earth he just managed to get himself into the south city, alongside his new bear buddy. He apologizes for making the bear run so fast, but the bear dude doesn't care. However, Earth notices people are singing and playing instruments on the streets. He asks if they're in any festive season. But the bear explains the fairy kingdom cities sponsor anything related to arts. In the north, they sponsor literature, the east is painting, the west sculpture, and the south is music. Earth thinks he can listen to several types of music as he walks throughout the city. But right now, he's too tired to explore. The bear then recommends him an inn. There, the inn owner mentions he doesn't have a problem with Earth staying there along with the wild hair Zet. Earth is a bit confused by that name, but the bear simply replies that the title is embarrassing. Earth gets into his room and jumps into bed, thinking it is a blessing to get help from a fairy who has a title. He decides to log out and get some sleep. The next day, he logs into the game and tries to get out of bed, but he cannot get up. He thinks that's a game bug, but notices something weird under his blanket. He looks under it and sees the fairy queen. He asks her to let him go but she refuses to. He mentions how people could misunderstand their situation, but she replies that he will hate it, therefore she won't let him go. The inn owner walks through the door without knocking and sees the whole thing. He decides to leave, apologizing for the interruption, but Earth asks for his help. The bear dude comes in, asking how he can help Earth. Upon noticing the situation, he starts laughing, mentioning how Earth was fast. But Earth tries to push the fairy queen away, mentioning he didn't bring her here. The fairy queen holds on to him, mentioning that if she lets him go, he will leave the country. The other two then see her face and are shocked to see their queen. Suddenly, her dragon sister appears, shocking the other two even more. She asks what the fairy queen is doing, and she replies that she came to apologize for the other maniac girl's actions in the southern city. She mentions that Dogface was punished along with her father and their private army of 80 soldiers. Earth asks what the punishment was. The fairy queen happily tells him what she did. She teleported them to an empty field and nearly killed them 30 times as she healed them 29 times. She also mentions that Dogface was demoted to the lowest rank soldier. However, Bear Dude and Little Guy cannot believe the punishment. Ryu mentions that her sister revealed her true persona and she will start scaring people away. Earth dismisses everything, mentioning how everyone else has treated him fairly and reveals he won't have the country because of Dogface. The Fairy Queen gets all happy just like a child, but Ryu smacks her on the head. She tells her to stop using her disgusting appeal out of nowhere. The two girls start arguing with each other until Ryu pulls her ear and slowly takes her older sister away. Bear Dude uses his chance to mention that not only Earth is close to their queen but also to the dragon kind. The inn owner also asks if Earth knew that fairies used to be at war with other races. Earth is confused, but the owner mentions the dragon kind were the toughest opponents during that war. Earth is surprised, but Bear explains that town citizens would panic if they knew a dragon was there. They promise to keep that a secret and little guy leaves the two to talk. Earth couldn't believe this just happened but Bear just called him a luck guy because the queen had her eyes on him. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. It's a girl looking for the wild hair Zetan. She reveals that her daughter has gone missing and asks him to find her daughter. Earth tells her to calm down and asks for all the details. She sits down and introduces herself as Karen Fenrir. Wild Hair mentions they're a noble family. Karen then explains that her daughter always takes a walk at the same hour of the day, every day. But she hasn't returned yet. Karen tried to look for her and couldn't find her. Wild Hair explains they're a race that can transform between a wolf and human form. 
Therefore, her daughter shouldn't be in danger from monsters. Karen explains that's the reason why she suspects something worse has happened. She shows them her daughter's picture and promises a reward. Wild Hair accepts the request and Earth explains he will help him. Karen promises to compensate the two fairly. The two guys step onto the streets, trying to find some clues. Wild Hair apologizes for dragging Earth into this, but he dismisses it, mentioning it's a way to thank him for bringing him here. Yet, the bear mentions that Earth should simply cook him some food to thank him. After walking for a while in the forest, Earth senses monsters around them. Some goblins attack them, but our boys easily defeat them. Wild Hair praises Earth for being reliable and fighting, but Earth thinks the bear can easily overpower any monster with his strength. Earth then checks his map and spots several dots nearby. They decide to investigate and Earth, using his long-distance vision skill, finds Mina, Karen's daughter, surrounded by goblins. Earth tells his plan to Wild Hair. The bear will run toward them to Hulk smash the goblins and then splash a potion on Mina while Earth gives support. They quickly start the plan, and the goblins prepare to attack. Earth uses his archer skills to protect Mina while Wild Hair goes on the bonga. He then splashes the potion onto Mina and she's healed in an instant. He tells her to hold on while he deals with everything. After dealing with every goblin, Earth finally approaches the two. Wild Hair mentions it was easy to fight because of Earth's support, and Mina thanks them for helping her. Wild Hair replies that her mother requested them to find her, and they introduce themselves. Upon hearing the bear's name, the girl goes crazy, calling herself Lucky. Earth notices how famous Zetan is, but interrupts them to ask why didn't Mina transform into her wolf form. Mina explains that while walking, she smelled something sweet that made her mind go blank. She later came back to her senses and noticed that she was surrounded by goblins. She then tried to transform, but she couldn't. Earth gives her a pot and tells her to try to transform. She follows his advice and ends up transforming, but she's confused about why she couldn't earlier. Earth thinks to himself that he just used an anti-poison potion. Therefore, someone poisoned her. He then tells her to return to her human form and go back home to Zetan's back. Our friendly neighborhood bear asks what about Earth, but he replies that he's tried, so he will rest for a short moment. Zetan decides to follow the request and leaves with Mina. After being far enough, Earth looks back to the bushes, asking how long they plan to wait. He then reveals they were the non-monster icons he saw on his map, and how the goblins had weapons and armor on them. He then throws an explosion pot onto the bush, mentioning that he knows that person controlled the goblins and poisoned Mina. A guy jumps from the bush and asks why Earth is attacking him, but our boy simply replies that kidnapping and killing are actions of villains. The guy gets up, all mad but Earth realizes something. This is a human but not a player. If he lets this guy escape, the relations between humans and fairies could get cold and lead to war. The guy pulls a knife and attacks Earth, but our boy teleports away and kicks him on the head. The guy tries to get up, mentioning he's a human while they are fairies. But Earth couldn't care less about it. He only cares if they can cooperate or not. The guy tries to attack him, but he suddenly gets destroyed. Earth thinks that the best case scenario is for fairies and humans to recognize their strengths and weaknesses and hold hands while walking forward. But if they have to fight, he will side with the fairies and won't show mercy to humans. He then decides to walk back and is surprised to see the bear and Mina waiting for him. He asks if they didn't go back, and Zetan replies that he wanted to see if Earth could catch the bad guy. Earth mentions the guy was just disposed of and Zetan tells him to hop on his back. Minutes later, Karen finally reunites with her daughter and thanks them for the help. She will be rewarding each of them with 100,000 glow. However, Earth wants something more as a reward. Turns out, he follows the bear code and wants to wingman his bear boy with Mina. The two are shocked but Mina gets shy. Earth uses this to reveal that she's interested in Zetan. This gives Mina the courage to express her interest in Zetan, who turns out to be shocked and asks for an explanation. Earth mentions Zetan's words that morning, wishing that he could also get a cutie. Mina quickly holds Zetan, making him lose his brain. Earth then takes them out of his room and calls for the fairy queen. She quickly appears, asking if he's going to confess to her, just to get another smack on the head. He then explains what happened, and she reveals that they cannot allow a confrontation between humans and fairies to happen. He agrees, and she thanks him for his help to prevent this. She promises to investigate, and Earth mentions he will go to B, asking her to leave. But she quickly jumps into his bed, mentioning they will be sleeping together. He refuses and yells at her to return. She jumps out of bed, asking him when she will see him next. Earth promises it will be soon, but she refuses to leave until he makes a promise. She reveals that she wants to show him some gratitude, but he asks if she's saying that as the Queen of Fairyland. She confirms, mentioning that after all, he prevented some conflict. 
He then promises that he will meet her again, but she doesn't have to show him some gratitude. She agrees, but Earth thinks that if she keeps him under surveillance, she will be just like Dogface. The next day, Earth decides to return to his previous main city because he needs more enhanced oils and to repair his bow. Zetan comes out of his room, and Earth decides to ask how things went with Mina. But Zetan's face is all red and she appears behind him. Earth quickly figures it out, and Zetan shyly mentions he will be living with Mina at the Fenrir mansion. They will be heading there and apologizes to Earth for not being able to take him back. Earth dismisses it, and thanks him for the fun time together. The two bump fists and Bear departs with his main girl. The inn owner, however, mentions that it's a long way back, but Earth has a trick on his sleeve. He calls up the Picarsha, impressing the inn owner, who reveals that not even noble families can ride them. Earth then reveals it was all a joke when suddenly, the Picarsha lands in front of them. They cannot believe their eyes, but Earth takes the ride. After flying for a bit, Earth tells the Picarsha to drop him near the city to avoid any ruckus. The bird is disappointed, but Earth prepares him some food to thank him. The bird starts devouring everything and rolls around in happiness. Suddenly, the bird plucks one of its feathers and gives it to Earth. It's a legendary accessory that can only be earned by getting a Picarsha's trust. It can relieve all fatigue, along with other stuff that can barely fit the screen. Earth thanks for the item, and the bird leaves. He returns to Blacksmith Place, mentioning he came to get some gear. Despite the lack of items, Earth manages to crease another X-style hunting bow made of light metal. Despite being heavier, it has 55 attack points, way higher than his former one. He then decides to test it, when he notices an announcement. He thinks the challenge of the dead has been fully completed. But suddenly, a girl hologram appears mentioning that he has released the souls of those who were suffering. She continues to give more lore than Final Fantasy, and reveals that the event rewards are limited and will be given to certain individuals. Turns out that to get them, the players must participate in a PvP tournament. She asks if he will join, but despite the attractive rewards, Earth presses the no button. Suddenly, he hears some screams and decides to investigate. He then finds three people collapsed on the ground, around a dragon egg that just hatched. Watch this next video, see you on the next one.